Welcome to Snowflake's Data Superheroes Origins. I'm your host, Kent Graziano, and this is my Data Dojo. On this episode of Data Superheroes Origins, I have Snowflake superhero, Randy Pitcher II. Welcome to the Data Dojo, Randy. Hey, Kent. Thanks for having me. Hey, we've gotten to speak uh, on your podcast in the past, and so it's great to have you here actually uh, interviewing with me on our uh, our Snowflake. Yeah, uh, we're uh, switching roles a little bit today. Yeah, no. Well, let's, uh, let, let's get going here. I know you and I have uh, interacted quite a bit over the last few years, but um, our viewers here may not know you quite as well. So how about, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and you know, where you're located and what your current role is. Yeah. Hey, I, my name is Randy Pitcher. I, uh, I'm a sales engineer at a company called HashMap and I'm located in Oklahoma city. So, uh, let's uh, get in a little deeper here. How did you get to this point in your career? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I, <laughs> I got started, um, not in data or computer science software at all. Uh, I got started thinking I would do um, chemistry and chemical engineering. And um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to do something technical. So I got into that and um, I, I worked for a little while in that space and it was not for me. But the things that were really cool about that job uh, was the data side. We did a lot of Excel back then, which I'm sure a lot of people still do. And my best days were the days where I wasn't mixing chemicals together, but when I was uh, making cool charts. And at the time I didn't realize that um, I, I couldn't see all that well. I, I needed glasses. So I relied a lot on colors and charts and um, heat maps. And that was so cool that I, uh, I transferred into a program focusing on software. Uh, that got me into oil and gas, uh, which took me to Houston, Texas. I worked for a very large oil company there um, in big data doing Hadoop. Um, so now I'm getting a little closer to maybe a Snowflake adjacent technology. I'm not doing Excel so much, but I'm, I'm writing SQL um, and wrestling with big massive infrastructure. Uh, and then I got tired of that. So I, I went into consulting and that's when I started uh, with HashMap about three years ago. And uh, luckily uh, one of our clients has asked us to do a project on Snowflake. And rather than have to mess with Spark configurations or, or Hive uh, table definitions or file formats, uh, I got to use Snowflake and it's been smooth sailing ever since. Wow. Well, you actually already started answering my second question, which is, you know, when did you develop a passion for data? Yeah. Sounds like when you were a chemical engineer. Yeah. When I was trying to develop a passion for not working in a factory, um, <laughs> it, it was Northern Indiana winter uh, through a lot of that. And um, I just come home literally covered in carbon. Uh, so we mixed um, elastomer like rubber for, uh, for oil and gas. So that's kind of how that connection happened. And uh, that was the intern who mixed it and it was not, awesome. But the, the data side was really cool. And I found that I could have a really meaningful impact without working um, a press or, or mixing, mixing chemicals. Um, and that's carried through. So whatever role I've been in, whether I've been more salesy or more technical, there's always a role for data to play to enable my teammates to do their jobs better, which for me, that's a real deep satisfaction, but also for me to understand new domains uh, a lot quicker. Wow. So, uh, what does it look like today? What's the day in the life of a Snowflake data superhero like for you? Yeah, so um, I kind of have a, a dual split right now. I wear a lot of hats. We're a small company, so um, it, it could be really any number of things. But one major thing that I do is help uh, companies considering cloud technologies or data technologies figure out what's right for them. And often that, that means Snowflake. Um, but if, if someone's newer to the concepts of the cloud and, and the benefits of the cloud, it, it can feel intimidating. And so my goal is to help them see that it's, it's not that bad. There's two or three things we should talk about up front, and then the rest is really good news. Um, and, and so that's been a satisfying part of the job. And then on the other end, um, keeping our company kind of running, particularly the marketing side, um, I, I do all of our data ingestion and transformation for our, our websites, our blogs, our, our video statistics. And that is a full Snowflake kind of modern data stack deployment that ends up in really cool charts that tells people what we should or shouldn't do. Wow. So you're actually a data engineer for HashMap internally, as well as being a, um, a consultant with our, our, our joint customers. It, I think that's probably one of my, um, 
know, secret weapons for helping people uh, adopt these new technologies is that day to day, I, I use them for real. Um, and, and that can help. They're not necessarily the, the same major scale, definitely not. But if I can save 20, 30% off my cloud bill, and okay, that's not that's not a lot of money at our, at our scale that we have internal cloud systems, but maybe you could save 10, 15% just by adopting this approach for analytics, forget the infrastructure trade-offs. So you're gonna save so much more doing that. But just from a use case perspective, and I can speak from a position of subject matter expertise, that, that's a really good advantage. I would not trade that. I think I'd be less, um, I'd be less effective at my sales job if I, if I gave up the data entry side. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. I pretty much had that experience through my career too, even when, I'm, when I've been teaching yeah. about data and architectures and all of that, the fact that I've built all of these things myself as well and I know how to do it, it, it really helps to understand the customer's pain because yeah. you've been there, right? You've been there and you see that. It's a nice way to, I don't know, almost hack my, my schedule where I'll commit to maybe demo, giving a demonstration on an approach or technology that's adjacent to the cloud space or snowflake or transformation ingestion um, and say, okay, I got two weeks to do it. And I know I wanted to do this internally and haven't been able to find the time. Well, now I've married the two. So now I have to get it done. And at the end of the day, we have something real and useful. So uh, it's been a nice symbiotic relationship that way. No, that's great. So um, what does it mean being a, a Snowflake data superhero? What does that mean to you? Yeah, um, what does that mean? For me, it means community. That's the number one thing. Um, more than being a super data hero or just someone new to the space, it's uh, being able to connect with other people who are solving these kinds of problems and also finding it largely exciting. Uh, that's something I enjoy about the community. It's not just this is a useful tool. Um, there are a lot of useful tools. But it's a useful tool and it's fun and we're excited to tell each other about what we're doing and what we're working on and everyone has a fun story. So for me, I, I think in one word community is what it means. Oh, great. That's good. So uh, what's your all time favorite Snowflake feature so far that you oh, used? God, I'm the worst because I'll do a demo on Snowflake and I'll talk about four or five different favorite features. Um, I think for me, SQL everything is my favorite kind of feature. Uh, being someone who works across lots of different Snowflake environments and gives advice and guidance. Um, if I'm working on a tool that's very UI driven or, or uh, something like a cloud platform where someone's not using code, that's gonna require a call or lots of screenshots or, or lots of back and forth before we can figure out what a problem is. But when I'm working on Snowflake, I can send a SQL query and they can run it. And it doesn't matter who they are, I get the results back. Uh, so that really helps. Um, to enable people to solve their problems faster, which, you know, that's that's a passion for me. Um, outside of that, I mean, instant elasticity, scalability, that's incredible. The ability to work across all different clouds. I don't have to start the conversation with, okay, wait, hold on, what what cloud are you on? Well, no, never mind, we can't. No, it works across all of them. Um, the documentation is incredible. I like to always point out in the UI, the little question mark that we're used to ignoring, the help menu that is usually useless in most software, it's really, really helpful in Snowflake. Uh, so I have to set that expectation that it's a little different in uh, the documentation being split into concepts up top and then glossary and index lookup. Usually I have to either just get a glossary and an index and I don't really understand how things go together and I have to know what I'm looking for or I have to read through a bunch of narratives to look up a specific piece of info But Snowflake, best of both worlds. So I could keep going on. Um, that, that's kind of my long answer. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so much to like about the product. I mean, it, you've heard me talk about it several times now. So, you know, it's like, I have a hard time with what's my favorite feature too. Hard so, one. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. And then, you know, we just had the data cloud summit here uh, recently. So what's, what feature are you looking forward to testing out? I know for me, I've been really interested in the sharing capabilities, getting more and more, or, or less limited, right? Where now it's still early days for the, the promise of the mesh network of just data that happens seamlessly, the sharing capabilities. Um, I know we talk about that at every summit event because it's Snowflake, that's the core guiding like light at the end of the tunnel principle. And every time we get a little closer, I'm really ex excited to see that develop. Um, and then of course, Snowpark uh, in, in the most recent summit, you guys mentioned that that's gonna be really exciting. 
Yeah. I figured that might be something you'd be interested in. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, which you've done a lot with the community, obviously that's how you get recognized as a data superhero. Uh, which community contribution are you most proud of? Yeah, for me, I'm really proud of just Slack interactions. I, I know we have content that gets a little more attention, presenting at summits, right? Doing uh, Snowflake 101, zero to Snowflake sessions, and really helping people adopt. But the thing that gets me most excited is when I see a little Slack message that someone's asked like, hey, this odd thing is not quite working right, or this function is not behaving how I expect. I like diving into that and doing investigations. So I would say that on top of that, I've released a lot of videos, which is a new thing for me. I still feel really un uncomfortable being recorded, but video is a medium that people respond to really well. And particularly those folks who are the least confident in adopting Snowflake and making value out of it. They're the ones who are the least confident in going to the docs. So having a video that says, look, these are cool features. Let's put this in a way that you can understand it and then go off and build your own value. That's, that's really valuable. So again, it's hard to pick just one because it's, it's the combination of everything uh, where other, other tools and platforms, uh, I'm members of other communities, there are one or two things that are valuable and I feel good about, but here in the Snowflake community, it's, it's the combination of everything. Again, the ecosystem and the community. Yeah. So what's next for you in the uh, superhero journey? What do you got planned via, you just mentioned videos, podcasts. I know you do a lot of blogging as well. Yep. Um, other things that you see coming up here in the near future that uh, folks want, might want to keep an eye out for. Yeah. So at HashMap, uh, I get the opportunity to work on, they're like marketing accelerators. That's the like technical term. That's not interesting. They're uh, open source tools that we can build on top of usually Snowflake, um, just because that's the place of passion for me. Uh, and coming down the pipeline, I am helping to build more of these tools. So one would be uh, abilities to visualize your security hierarchy in Snowflake and really get, wrap your head around that. Mm -hmm. That's a great teaching tool as well because one of the, the stumbling blocks for people new to Snowflake is, well, okay, what's a role and how do users get permission and how do I know when I've configured this poorly? What about inheritance? It's just really easy to visualize that. And then people, it, it, it seems to click. So uh, those would be the focus for me next, I think is adding more tools like that. I, a space I've personally been really, really interested in thinking about lately is, I guess you'd call it data cataloging, but not just in the sense of like, um, here's your database, here's your schema, here's your table, but knowledge indexing. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen this, but sometimes an organization will invest a lot of money into getting the data warehouse, into getting replication to work correctly to ingest, transformations all set, they have all the good documentation, automation's done, and the dashboards are running. And then the business unit that you're not a part of still, does, still doesn't use it. And you finally get to all that, that trouble and it's cool, but like, why aren't they using it? And is the dashboard the right mechanism? And is there something else that should be, I don't know what that is, but that's what I've been thinking a lot about and kind of talking about. And yeah, maybe, maybe I'd like to work on some stuff like that. Cool. Cool. So, um, we've been talking a lot about your, your work life and snowflake and all the fun things there. Um, Tell our viewers something about you that might surprise them. Uh, something that might surprise them. So I, I keep, because I'm bad on my feet, I keep like an icebreaker answer for this question in my back pocket at all times. Um, the like one, I don't know, semi-interesting thing about me is uh, I like hot peppers. Um, yeah, I mean like really, really, really hot peppers. Uh, and I can have the hottest peppers in the world and it just doesn't, um, it doesn't hurt at all. I don't, I don't get hot. I don't get sweaty. So that's been a, I don't know about party trick, but that's been a, a fun thing sometimes is uh, take a, a ghost chili pepper. No problem. Turn wow. pepper. Yeah. I mean, it, Carolina Reaper uh, and, and those go on and on, right. That the state of that. Yeah. Yeah. I know I uh, worked in an office one time where there was a, kind of a challenge going on with that, where people were challenging each other to hotter and hotter things. And really, yeah, I know jalapeno is about it for me. So I, um, <laughs> I figured this, I didn't know this all the time. Like I knew like spicy food I like, but I didn't know it was a thing I could go way extreme. I, I used to work at a pizza place and delivering pizza through high school. It's a great way to make a little money. And um, a, a friend of mine there, he was much more on the internet than I was. Um, I didn't get the internet until I was in college. So he knew about Amazon and like ordering off eBay. And he ordered these really, um, they're, they're candies from Africa that were insanely hot. They were designed to be like hyper spicy hot. 
And um, he brought them in and, uh, you know, he said, hey, you guys want to try these? I mean, and he warned us, like, these are really hot. Well, oh, okay, I'll try it. And it was no problem. And uh, someone else who was watching saw me take them. I'm like, yeah, they're not that hot. Not realizing that for this person, they might be quite hot. So they, they took them by that candy. They spit it out immediately. They, they went on, like, for, for five, ten minutes, they were going on about how hot it was and just, like, spitting. And, uh, yeah, so with great power comes uh, great responsibility. <laughs> yeah um that's that's good that is a good story randy that's a good one yeah <laughs> chocolate covered oh my gosh that's hot <laughs> yeah and it had this cool like branding man i wish i could remember the name of it. i might have to reach out to that guy and uh, get some more of that candy but it yeah. it's hot stuff wow so um how can our viewers uh, continue to follow you on your journey what's the the best way to keep up with what randy's doing these days yeah that's a good question uh LinkedIn's a really good one. Um, so I'm linkedin.com slash and slash Randy Pitcher II. Uh, Cause as you, as you said, I am, I am the second. Um, and then also my GitHub is Randy Pitcher II. So you can find me there. If you want to chat, actually the place I spend the most time is the DBT Slack. So if you go to get dbt.com, um, they have, they have a Slack channel for the community. That is hmm. uh, one of the best places of the internet. I really like the Snowflake Slack channel as well. That's just more of an invite only thing though where the DBT Slack, anyone can join. And so if you wanted to get a hold of me, that's probably where I'm going to be at. Okay, good, good. And of course, they watch a hash map site for podcasts and videos and webinars that you're doing there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, it's, and if you've got me on LinkedIn, you're going to see a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just post all of that there every time it's coming up. Yep. <laughs> because I see that stuff all the time from you. <laughs> um, is there anything that we didn't cover that you want to share with our with the snowflake community here? Yeah, you know, that's that's a hard question. Um, I, I think I just encourage everyone to uh, continue working on snowflake projects, on data projects that uh, even, especially if you're like a, a large organization that has a lot of silos, a lot of maybe political uh, ambivalence towards the concepts of the clouds and doing things in a new way. Um, it does get better. Uh, it might be long and hard work, but uh, that first win, the first time you help someone like really see this new world of possibility, it makes it all worth it. Cool. Well, um, that's pretty much all the questions I had for you today. So uh, thanks so much for being with us. And uh, you know, hopefully we can see each other in real life again sometime soon. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Thanks, Kent. Really appreciate you having me on the program. So thanks everyone for joining Randy and I today at the Snowflake Data Dojo. If you enjoyed this interview, please like it and share it with your friends. This is Kent Graziano, the Data Warrior, signing off for now. See you on the next episode of Data Superheroes Origins. Mm -hmm.